Okay, moving on to the team in the Big Ten that we will be going over next, and this is going to be the team that I have finishing in second place in this Big Ten conference for the upcoming season, and it will be Brad Underwood and his Illinois Fighting Illini. And I feel like last year, right before the season started, I was on this Illinois bandwagon, and I feel like it was a bandwagon that, yeah, there were some people that were on it with me. There were some people that before last season were picking NC a tournament appearances for the Illinois Fighting Illini, but I do feel like last year, Illinois had some ups and some downs, but overall in the big picture, it was a really good season when you consider how far they came in the fact that they really haven't made the NCAA tournament since 2013. And if the pandemic doesn't happen, the Illini were clearly a tournament team. They had some really big wins in Big Ten play. And the good news is they bring back a lot of returning talent from last year's squad. And one of the more surprising NBA draft announcements, not only this year, but really since the uh, leaving for the NBA draft early has become a trend. Ayo Desumu, the point guard for Illinois, decided to come back to school for his junior season. He was one of the best players in college basketball last year. He averaged 16.6 points per game, 4.3 rebounds per game, 3.3 assists per game. And it's always good if you're a team like Illinois that is going to be competing for a Big Ten championship to have a player like that that you can really build around. They also bring back Trent Frazier, the 6'2 senior. He is a guy that has played a lot of basketball for this Illinois team. He's been playing consistent minutes really since his freshman year, which was also Brad Underwood's first year as the head coach. He averaged 9-2 and two last year. Really solid player. And then the other big guy they bring back, Kofi Coburn. The monster seven foot sophomore, he averaged 13.3 points per game and 8.8 rebounds per game, and he's going to be the starting center. Now, the question for Illinois is exactly what is the team going to look like around those two players? And one thing I really like about this Illinois team that makes me confident that this fighting Illini team is going to be better than last year's is that even though they're not bringing everyone back from last year's squad, right? They do lose Andres Feliz and Alan Griffin and Kipper Nichols. Nichols didn't really do much last year, but the first two, Griffin and Feliz, were really big-time contributors. Feliz was a goo guy. He would give the team some instant offense at times last year. And then Alan Griffin, who transferred to Syracuse, he's a really good player. He was a uh, Illinois' best shooter last year, and really, when I look at this Fighting Illini team, that's the one thing that off the bat, previewing this squad really concerns me. I do think if Illinois just had a smidge better shooting, I would have picked the Fighting Illini to win the Big Ten, but unfortunately, they don't, and to be honest, for me, that's why last year, even though Illinois was pretty solid, the more and more I watched them, I think they had a little bit of a ceiling just because they had... A lot of good playmakers, but not enough shot makers. And my overall question for this Fighting Illini team is that this season, with the guys they bring in, along with all of the guys that they return, so I'm talking about the two freshmen, Adam Miller and Andre Curbelo, two freshmen that are really going to play some big-time minutes and have the chance to be really good players. But I'm not 100% sure that by this season, they're going to be able to take a big-time role and be able to shoot the ball for this Illinois squad. They also bring back Georgie Bashanashvili, and I feel like Georgie coming back is good for Illinois, and I do think Georgie is going to be better this year than he was last year because this year Georgie has a little bit more of a clear role. I think Illinois and their spacing last year wasn't great when they were putting Georgie on the floor along with Kofi Coburn because even though for a big man Georgie can shoot it a little bit the spacing was just not good, and it really clogged up too many lanes for the guards like Desumu, Frazier, and the guys that are going to play this year, I think, like Curbelo and Miller. So I do feel like Illinois and Brad Underwood would, uh, are making that right move by playing that little bit of a smaller lineup around Kofi Coburn. Right now, most people are projecting it to be Trent Frazier at the 1, Adam Miller, the freshman, at the 2, Ayo Desumu at the 3, Demonte Williams at the 4, and Kofi Coburn at the five with Curbelo, Bishanishvili, and then a couple transfers, I believe, that will be coming off the bench. You start off with Jacob Grandison, the 6'6 redshirt junior. He uh, came in from Holy Cross. He averaged about 14 points and five rebounds per game last year, along with three assists. And then they also bring in Austin Hutcherson, the Division II transfer wing 6'6. It's going to be interesting to see if him 
uh, improving a role and improving a level of basketball. I'm curious to see if he's going to be able to make an impact or not. But this is a big season for Brad Underwood because I'm not going to lie. I really liked Brad Underwood and what he was able to do at Stephen F. Austin his first couple years there, leading them to the NCAA tournament, and consistently, they were one of the better mid-majors in all of college basketball. He also was able to lead Oklahoma State to the NCAA tournament. Uh, That team overachieved, and that was actually the only year he was at Oklahoma State, but his first two years at Illinois didn't go great, and to be honest, the way he was building the program, I was like, eh, I'm not 100% sure if Brad Underwood is ultimately going to lead this team uh, down the right road, but at the same time, I have to give him credit, because last year, I expected Illinois to be good just based on talent, and they exceeded my expectations. And if you're an, a fan of the Fighting Illini, this season is going to be the most hyped up one, maybe since the team that went all the way to the Final Four with D. Brown and Deron Williams, because they just bring back a lot of returning pieces and a lot of guys that are super experienced. And I feel like with Illinois, they're going to have a lot of different options to do a lot of different things. I like Trent Frazier leading that backcourt running with Io DeSumo, which allows the Illinois best player player uh, to catch the ball on the move and he immediately runs his defender off like a Coburn ball screen Io DeSumo could drive the lane and I feel like ultimately that's what's going to happen with this Illinois team I feel like Brad Underwood is really going to have to do a good job managing his chess pieces here and Illinois started off last season really strong and the hopes for this season are very high there are many people that are tabbing Illinois as a top 10 team And I have them maybe just outside that. I have them as like a top 10, top 12 team. But I do have them coming in second place in the Big Ten because there are some shooting concerns that are enough to give me some pause, along with questions about the ceiling of a core that's nearly identical to the one that wasn't a top 25 team last year. Still, though, I do believe there is a lot of talent to like here. Kofi Coburn is going to be one of the best players in college basketball. I think he has potential to win the defensive player of the year. He's going to lock down the paint, and Io DeSumo on the perimeter could really play. Plus, he gave Brad Underwood a really good dynamic guard last year to make lead plays and in that backcourt I just think it's much more improved and going to be much more dynamic with Desumu and Frazier coming back along with Demonte Williams and the additions of freshman Curbelo and Miller and Mil- and Grandison and Hutcherson the transfer so Illinois I'm somewhat high on them I feel like most people are going to have them in the top 10 there are even going to be some people having them win the big 10 I'm not on that bandwagon yet but I do believe the top tier in the big 10 of Wisconsin the first team we went over today Illinois, and then the next team we're going to go over that I have coming in third, I think those three teams all have a legitimate shot in this Big Ten, and the Big Ten is just such a deep league. We're going to get to all the teams in this league, but you guys know I have Illinois at the top, and whoever's going to win this league is going to be really good because it's a top, deep league.